Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. We begin our worship this day in the name of the one who created us, Jesus Christ, who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit, who comforts and sustains us. Amen. Um, this weekend, we enter the second week of the Epiphany season, the season of light. And our gospel for this day is um, according to St. John, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And um, the title of our message for this day comes really right from this gospel, and it is Jesus sees you, Jesus understands you. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So for just a moment, I'd like you to think about that person, or maybe there's a couple persons in your life who really gets you who truly sees you, who knows your heart. Um, and I, of course, first and foremost, think of my husband, Ted, and my dearest friend, Ted, my best friend. And um, Ted does have Parkinson's disease, as I've shared before. And this week we had a hard conversation with family members and we're going to have to have a lot more about what are his wishes truly um, for when he um, dies and, and what he wants, what his wishes are. But also, um, you know, as his illness progresses, what are his wishes and then, even though I'm a lot younger and don't have any health issues, what his wishes are if something should happen to me. So we've been having these hard conversations. And, um, and family members, you know, people are not always seeing things in the same way. But Ted and I have been talking a lot together and being so thankful and grateful that the two of us really see each other. We know each other's hearts through and through. We understand each other and where we're coming from. 
Um, so think of that person or those persons in your life who really see you, who, who get you, who know your heart, who truly understand you. And, you know, sometimes other people who do not truly know us misinterpret us. And when that happens in my own life, you know, I talk to Ted, but sometimes I also call up my other best friend, Peggy, who lives in California. We've known each other since the seventh grade, and Peggy's my reality check. Peggy grounds me because Peggy knows my heart through and through. And um, so I invite you to think of that person or those persons in your life who truly see you, get you, know your heart, understand you. Okay. Well, in today's gospel, the word to see is all over the place. And if we even went back to the paragraph right before today's gospel, that word, it's filled with Jesus saw him, um, behold or look, here's the Lamb of God. It's, it's about seeing Jesus, it's about Jesus seeing others. And um, in English, we just hear this word see, 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 to see, he saw, etc. But in the Gospel in Greek, which the New Testament was written in Greek, in, in this very paragraph we just read, there were three different words for see going on in Greek. And they, and they're all a little, they all have a different meaning. So there's blepo, which is like to see with your eyes. It's that very uh, basic physical dimension of seeing. And then there's... Um, I have to check my notes. There's optomai. We get optometrist, right? And that has to do with um, also the physical act of seeing like optometry, right? Um, but the word that I want us to think about today in Greek is ido, ido. And that word, I remember way back when I was studying Greek, learning about Greek, I and and applying it and reading it in the New Testament, I thought it was fascinating because this Greek word ido means not just to see with our physical eyes. In fact, you can be physically blind and see with ido because ido means to truly know something or someone. It means to understand, to um, perceive like to know the the heart of someone to experience someone Ido and like in in the Bible I think we can think of it in terms of the, the 139th Psalm oh God you have searched me and known me right God knows our hearts through and through there's so many places in scripture where it says Jesus um, knew people's hearts. That's the kind of seeing Jesus does with others. And that's the verb I want us to think about today, that type of seeing. So in the paragraph right before this, it's all about seeing. Again, all those three different words are being used, but the place where Ido is used is it, it's the story of John the Baptist hanging out with two of his disciples and Jesus walks by and he says to his disciples, behold the Lamb of God. Now in the very modern translation it just says, look the Lamb of God. The verb he's using is ido, okay? And what he's trying to say to his disciples is pay really close attention look here, perceive, understand, know, experience. This guy here, this Jesus guy, is the Lamb of God. He wants them to know that on a heart level, to experience that, to, 
to have a Christ event, if you will, to encounter Jesus in that deep heart knowing kind of way. Okay, so um, then the next place it's used is, so the John says, behold, look, the Lamb of God and his two disciples follow Jesus and Jesus turns around and says, um, what are you looking for? Um, and they say, Rabbi, where are you staying? And Jesus says, come and see. And again, that word see is Ido. Come and experience me. Come and um, get to know, know me on this deep, intimate level. I want you to come and understand me and know my heart through and through. Come and see Ido, this deep knowing seeing. And then we have today's, um, today's paragraph, which comes next, where um, Philip has seen and known and gets it who this Jesus is. So he says to Nathaniel, you've got to come and see, and again, it's Ido, you've got to come and experience and get to know and and really experience on this deep, intimate level this, we have found this Messiah, this Son of God, and, and it's Jesus, Son of Joseph of Nazareth, and Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And that's in, in that way, he's just seeing on that very surface level, Jesus um, as, you know, from this little middle of nowhere town, Nazareth, which was kind of notorious for being a middle of nowhere town. And he's saying, can anything good come out of a place like that? And that's, you know, he, he kind of represents those people who dismiss or discard others because um, they don't get them. They don't really see them on that deeper level. So guess what Philip says to Nathaniel? Come and see. Come and see for yourself. Experience this Jesus. Get to know him. Uh, learn his heart through and through. And so Nathaniel does. Well, um, the, the next thing that happens is um, when Jesus sees, and that's the basic see with your eyes, sees Nathaniel coming along, he says, Behold, here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit, no guile. Um, in other words, he already kind of sees Nathaniel, but Nathaniel says, how do you how do you know me? And Jesus says, before when you were under the fig tree, I saw you, Ido. I saw you in a very deep level. I came to know you when I was seeing you under the fig tree, when I was experiencing you under the fig tree, okay? And that's a really, what was happening? What was Nathaniel doing under this fig tree? It's interesting because in both the Bible, but in other religions as well, fig trees were considered sacred trees. The Buddha, uh, five, six hundred years before Jesus, had his enlightenment experience under a, a sacred fig tree. So what was Nathaniel doing under this fig tree? If you've watched the... Um, the TV series, The Chosen, which is a beautiful, beautiful version, I highly recommend it, of Jesus and his disciples, his chosen disciples. Um, and it really brings it to life. There's a scene of Philip under this, I mean of Nathaniel, under the fig tree, and he's having one of those um, really difficult, profound moments where he is sobbing and he's pouring his heart out to God under that fig tree. 
that's how they portray this fig tree experience in the Chosen series. And I really like that because I think something was going on with Nathaniel under this fig tree that Jesus truly saw and understood. Because when he says to Nathaniel, well, I saw you, Ido, I, I saw you in that deep way. I came to know you, to understand you when you were under the fig tree. And Nathaniel says, truly, you are the Son of God. You are it, after Jesus says that. So for just a moment, I'd like you to think about your fig tree experience. Um, when you're at your absolute most desperate point and you um, are pouring your heart out to God, Let's think of that as our fig tree experience. Today, I didn't choose to go out by the ocean or by beautiful trees or any of that. I chose to film today's message right here in my home in this chair that belonged to my first my grandparents, then my parents, now me. This space right here is my prayer space where I have my, my time of prayer each morning and I can tell you truthfully, there have been many times right here in this chair where I have sobbed deeply and poured out my heart to God and felt truly seen, truly known, truly understood. And so I invite you to think of your fig tree experience, your fig tree space. And the message to you and to me this day is that Jesus truly sees you in that deep, Ido kind of way. Jesus doesn't just look at you. Jesus sees you, understands your struggles, truly sees into your heart your true and deep self. Jesus gets you. And that's a profound thing. And so sisters and brothers, um, today, this weekend, we also celebrate Martin Luther King weekend. And um, for um, my work in campus ministry, we have uh, an inclusive reading club, and we're reading a book by Coretta King, the wife of Dr. Martin Luther King. And I confess, I've read so many of Dr. King's, you know, books about him, books of his sermons. Um, I took a course on him in grad school. I've done um, uh, the the first level class um, at URI's Institute for Peace and Nonviolence based on, you know, Dr. King's teachings um, on peace and nonviolence. You know, I'm, I know a lot about him, but this book is fascinating because I'm learning about his wife, Coretta. And from, I'm about a third of the way through the book, but already I can understand that she and Martin saw each other, got each other, truly understood each other's heart. And what an amazing gift for him to have a life partner in Coretta who truly got him. So today, sisters and brothers, we give thanks for those best friends or those partners, those life partners who truly see us, who get us, who understand our hearts through and through. Um, but most especially, we give thanks that Jesus sees us. Um, 
knows our hearts through and through, understands us, gets us. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.